Hey there once again fellow flight simmers and cockpit builders Jose here back again with another one of my back to basics videos and this time we're going to be talking about the DM13A LED driver and also one that I've been wanting to make for a very long time um, I think it's kind of cool how with you know just like with uh, multiplexers you can use one of these DM13A's to basically connect 16 LEDs while only using one pin on the Arduino so I find it kind of cool. Um, so there's a lot to go over on this video, but before we go any further, as I always like to say, just want to remind you guys that I am not a spokesperson and I do not represent SimVimX or Real Sim Control. I'm just a user, just like you guys, and this is just my way of understanding the material on the website. So you know, I'm only human. So if I happen to get something wrong, I'm really sorry, but I do try my best to make sure that. The information that I present to you guys and the examples that I put here on my table, you know, are as accurate as possible. All right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get going. All right. So if you look here on my workbench, you'll notice that I have uh, quite a few bunch of things already laid out up here. Um, so this is the DM13A. This is the way that I bought them. It's the big package, you know, so when you connect them, um, we're gonna go over all the connections and everything real quick, but I just had everything set up already for testing. So I wanted to kind of show you guys how it's gonna look at the end of it, but I'm gonna go over all the wiring steps and everything so you guys can fully understand it. But just remember the, the DM13A itself can be powered from the five volts coming out of the Arduino, but the LEDs, they have to be powered by a separate power supply. And it could be any voltage, you know, like from around five volts, to maybe 15 or 12 or 15 volts or whatever that's just going to change the resistors that you have to use limit the current going to the LEDs so I'm going to go ahead and get all this out of here and then I'm going to start going over the website what it talks about the DM13A and then we're going to start connecting it okay just for the record as of the version that I'm using today it is version 2.06 of the plugin and the database version is uh, dated on April 4th, 2022. Um, that was the latest one that had been available. It was actually available today when I was recording this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and get myself out of the picture here. And then we're gonna just go ahead and talk about this. So once again, you know, we go over to the output section. So last time we talked about direct connection of the LEDs, but you know, that's obviously the, the two disadvantages of that obviously are that you can only connect a certain number of LEDs because you don't want to draw too much power from the Arduino itself. And also every LED that you connect, you're gonna take up one pin. So one of the good things about this is that you can use up to 16 LEDs with one pin on the Arduino. Um, and then the other advantage that I really like is that you don't need to use the resistor with each one. As you can see right here on this drawing that I'm looking at, it's just directly connected you know, to the to the DM13A and there is no resistors between each LED which I think is really nice too. One of the most important things like I mentioned before um, and it mentions it right here on the website too that the driver the DM13A can be powered from the 5 volt output on the master board or, or the Arduino but for the LEDs you need to have another power source and that's why I'm using that external power brick that I showed you guys at the beginning um, and it says here that it can be from 5 to 15 volts depending on the type of LEDs that you use and we already saw how that goes <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and um, start going over basically the the wiring part of it because it does look a little bit complicated but I'll show you guys why it's not too bad okay if we look at this diagram that they have on the website here uh, you can see that it looks complicated right so you have on pin number one over here, the pins on chips, they always start, you know, with this little notch facing up. And this is always pin number one. And then it goes down like this. So this is pin number 12 right here. And then it continues on the bottom over here, 13. And it goes up to the top right, which is pin number 24. So the thing is that on pin number one, you can see that it goes to ground but it also has a resistor that kind of joins up with the uh, one that goes to the control pin on the Arduino coming out of pin number three. All right, and then pin number two, 
goes to the D data line and pin number four goes to the L data line. So that's, um, that's the left hand side. And then from pin number five on, it's gonna be the LEDs. Now we get, when we get over to the other side over here, I believe so pin number 24 on the upper right, that's the power. That's gonna go, that can go directly to the Arduino, like I said. And then there's a resistor over here going to ground. This is the one that controls the brightness of your LEDs. So it depends on what type of LEDs you have, how bright they are, what voltage of the power supply you're using. So that's gonna determine what resistor you use right here. Um, I'm using on this side over here because it doesn't really talk about this. I'm using a one kilo ohm resistor right here on the left and I'm using a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor on the right. So as you can see, it says it could be from one, one ohm, I guess it's one ohm or one kilo ohm to 22 kilo ohms. Um, but I've used 22, I mean, sorry, I, I've used 220 ohm resistors with LEDs that were very dim and I've used up to 3.5 or 3.7 kilo ohms with LEDs that were very bright. So it's, you, you just gotta test it with yours and figure out what you wanna use there. All right, so that one goes to ground. And then pin number 22 is gonna go to another DM13A if you want to daisy chain them. I'm not gonna talk about that on this video, you know, because I don't wanna make it more complicated than it's already gonna be and I don't wanna make it too long either. So I'll just talk about daisy chaining them in a separate video. And then uh, pin number 21 is gonna go to, this one that says ENA, is gonna go to ground. So if you notice, there's three grounds, but there's no reason to have three separate lines going to ground. If you remember on most of the videos I mentioned that there's a lot of lines that you can join, you can make them common, like all the grounds are gonna be common, all the five volts, you know, they're gonna be common. Um, all the ones going to the D line or the L line are gonna be common. So you don't have to take three individual grounds. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna kinda do what it does on, on this picture that they have here. So it's really difficult to see it right here, but if you notice, um, it has a little wire going here. I think this is from pin number 20 right here, or 21, I'm sorry. And that one is coming over uh, all the way across and then it joins up with this one that joins comes over to the other side where the where the number one pin is going to go to ground and then the resistor right here is coming from pin number 21 or 20 eh, I'm all confused now but but you know what what it is uh this one right here comes over and also joins with a ground that's coming to the other ground so that's what I'm going to do on this one so I'm gonna leave that picture right there as we're working through this. And basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you, so um, the resistor that's gonna come from pin number 23 right here to pin number 21, which is this other black one that I have down here, that's gonna be this 2.2 kilo ohm resistor that I have right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put that right there, okay? So that's, that's the resistor that you're seeing there on the upper right of that image. Okay, and then the ground, this ground right here, I'm gonna bring it around and join together with the ground over here coming out of pin one, which is the one that's gonna go to the main ground over here on the Arduino. So all I'm gonna do is basically put a jumper wire from here to over here, okay? So that's that one right there. Now. There's another resistor on the left. If you notice, there's a, a resistor that has to go from pin number one that's gonna go to ground and it's gonna join up with um, pin number three, which is going to the pin on the Arduino. So th this resistor here that I have over here, this is the one kilo ohm. So it's gonna go from number three right here to the one that's gonna go to ground. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it across like that. I hope you guys can see it. Um, I'm gonna show it to you closer on the other on the other little thing that I have over here, but I hope you understand what I'm doing right there. Okay, so now that we have all those good, now we can go ahead and just uh, connect the main one that's gonna go to ground. So we can just go ahead and do this one. 
and that one's gonna go to the, the to the ground the common ground that goes to the Arduino um, I guess now we can go ahead and connect our our power so our power is gonna go over here from pin number 24 which is the red one over here is the last pin up here on the top left I'm sorry the top right so we can go ahead and put this one here and connect it to the common 5 volts coming from the Arduino there okay so now we got most of those connections now um, so the ENA is gonna go to this this pin number one over here which is gonna go to ground um, number three over here which is the one that goes to the Arduino has a um, I always forget if it's a pull-up resistor or a pull-down resistor but it's going to that pin that's gonna go to ground and then pin number 23 over here which is supposed to have this resistor here this is the one that regulates the brightness of the LEDs is gonna go to this ground that eventually ends up going to the Arduino common ground alright so now now we can do the other three here so I put um, this little 90 degree angle ones here just so that it can be a little bit better to see this but basically what we're gonna do is connect the blue one here and this one's gonna go to the D line if you look on the picture the blue one is going to the D line which is pin number two so I'm gonna go ahead and put that one up here on the D line okay and then we have the the one that looks kind of gold or brown orange I'm gonna use an orange one for that one that's on pin number three and that one's gonna go to the pin on the Arduino so that one I'm going to do on pin number 53 over here on the Arduino so I'm gonna take it up here and connect it right there on 53 okay and finally um, the purple one which is on pin number four that goes to the L line so I'm gonna connect that there and then bring it around this way and the L line is my brown one up here on the on my distribution hub right there I think you can barely see it right there but that's my L line that you can see right there alright so that's it that's all the wiring right there now the only other thing we need to do is we connect the the power adapter which I have over here so this power adapter once I decide to connect it after I connect all the LEDs so the power connector basically is gonna go um, these are the wire this is the wire coming out of the power adapter so the negative is gonna go to the common ground of the whole system which eventually ends up going to the Arduino here and then the positive I'm gonna just put it on this little um, proto board right here so that I can just tap off of it and the reason I have this one right here this red wire coming across is because I'm gonna connect the LEDs on this side and I'm gonna connect the LEDs on this side so I'm just gonna you know basically grab from those two right there so that's it that's all the wiring everything else from here on is just the LEDs and this is the part that's different about the LEDs for this system alright so on the LEDs this is gonna be the difference between the way we did it the other day and the way you have to do it for the DM13A so with this one all the anodes are gonna go to the positive so you can join them all together because they're all gonna get the 5 volts from the same place and the cathodes which are the negatives those are the ones that are gonna go to the pins over here on the DM13A so and then eventually you know the the power the 5 volts are gonna join up with a little proto board right here to get the 5 volts on the power supply so I'm gonna go ahead and connect those right here one three and five all right and just remember that in uh, computer and logic and everything everything starts with zero so the first pin that would take an LED is zero and one two three four five all the way to 15 which normally you know is 16 LEDs but it's zero through 15 not one through 16 okay so then I go ahead and I connect my power right here to the rail to get it from here and then on the other side I actually have these green ones right here which are the I think these are the pretty bright ones um, so same thing I'm gonna go ahead and connect them over here 
and I will put them on uh, I'll put them on 8 11 and 15 all right so they're connected there and just connect them here to the 5 volt rail okay now that we have everything connected I'm gonna go over to the website and we're gonna go to the configurator and we're gonna basically I'm gonna use a 737 again like I always do and we're gonna just assign uh, you know some things to it but the first thing you need to do to assign a DM 13 a is you have to tell the configurator where you want to put it so if you remember I connected mine on pin number 53 so I basically just have to click on pin 53 and I want to add an an LED driver serial and there that's it now it gives me the positions for the LEDs and remember I told you these are chainable daisy chainable so this is gonna give you 64 LEDs I believe I mentioned that before so 0 to 63 and if you notice every time you see a, a gray one that's when the next one starts so obviously the first one is gonna be 0 to 15 and then the second one is uh, 16 through 31 and so on and so forth but we're only gonna be playing with the first 15 right here okay so I already had a list of things that I wanted to assign so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna go ahead and assign where is it at all oh, right here so we're gonna assign the red ones to the fire test so when this turns red um, that would be the LEDs the red ones that would turn red so I'm gonna go ahead and assign the one for the engine number one is gonna go to I believe I put that on number one I think yeah one three and five so I'll put that on that one and then the APU we're gonna put the LED on number three and then the other engine LED we're gonna put that on number five and for the green ones um, I think I'm gonna use some of the autopilot stuff um, I'm sorry the the MCP so I'm gonna put one for heading select the LED and I believe I had put that on number 15 let's just say 15 oops sorry 15 here and then we're gonna do uh, localizer LED on number 8 and then we're gonna do altitude LED on number 11 okay before I go ahead and save the configuration file I wanted to talk about they just added a new feature I think about a week or two ago where you can actually now use a an LED driver like a DM 13 a off of any output multiplexer so just like you can use an output multiplexer to connect seven segment displays now you can also connect DM 13 a's so if you want to do that you just select whichever pin you want to assign that to you go put an output multiplexer there and then when you get the pins where you would normally assign seven segment displays you can just click on any one of them and then you can add an LED driver so now imagine if you if you really really wanted to on one output multiplexer you can have 16 DM 13 A's and on each one of those you can daisy chain four of them to have 64 LEDs on each one so that just gives you an insane number of outputs you know for LEDs but I don't think there's anybody that will need that many but in case you wanted to you can do that alright so I'm just gonna go ahead and save my configuration file here so it's gonna be called data.config alright now that I got the camera there I'm gonna go ahead and reload the configuration real quick and then we can start playing around with this so if you remember I did the red ones for the fire test so we can go ahead and come over here to the radio panel area here and I'm gonna just do the fire test right here and those three red LEDs should come on and there they go so they're good and then the other one I did on the MCP panel uh, so heading select and there it is and VOR there's another one and altitude so there's a third one and remember what I told you about the brightness these are extremely bright because 
I'm only using the 2.2 .2 kilo ohm resistor that I put here on the DM13A. So what I've done is in order to uh, mitigate that, I have a resistor down here. I think you can see it. So this is a, a 1.5 kilo ohm resistor. So what I'm going to do instead of tapping off the 5 volts directly from the power supply, I'm going to go through this other resistor. So I just have to basically go over to this side and that makes a huge difference in the brightness. You see that? So that's another thing you can do. You know, you can just add another resistor to the to the tip of the power line or you can put it like right here. You can just put the resistor right here between the LEDs and, and where you're going to get the 5 volts. And you see that makes a tremendous difference. Because I, if I was to do the fire test right here, right now, you see now even the red ones kind of look brighter, but I think they're almost about the same. But if I was to put it the way it was before, yeah, so now you see when I do the fire test, the, the red ones are still the same brightness, but the green ones are way too bright. So that's what I did. I just uh, added another resistor over here and that's it. All right, so now that we see that working, I don't think we have to go through any more. Um, because just like I assigned those functions right now, you know, you can assign anything. I'm sure you guys know by now. If you've seen enough of my videos, you can see that the process is the same. I always use the 737 just because it has so many things that we can assign for pretty much any type of button, switch, or annunciator, or whatever. So I just like using it because it's, a, it's an airplane that I know well, and it has a lot of a lot of things. And everything works on it because it's one of the ones that, that Vlad and Roman have custom worked on to make everything work so that's why i use that one all the time but what i wanted to to show you guys also is um this other thing hold on let me put it over here okay so i wanted to show you guys um this other one here that i have because i wanted you to see how it actually looks if you were to solder everything into the dm13a and then of course out of the rest of these pins you would just have your um, cathode leads, you know, going to the LEDs or coming from the LEDs. Okay, so if we look at the pictures here, you got pin number one over here on the upper left, and you got it goes to ground and it has a resistor that joins up with a wire coming out of pin number three that goes to the Arduino, which in my case is an orange one. So if we look at the one I soldered here, you can see that I have. Um, soldered on to pin number one it's coming out and it's going to ground and then it also has a resistor that I'm joining up to pin number three which is the orange one that's going to the Arduino right here okay and then pin number two we got the blue one which goes to the D line so I just have it here on pin number two is the blue wire it just goes directly to the D line on my bus uh, distribution board and then pin number four is the L line, which is a purple one or so. So I got pin number four is one, two, three, four is going with a purple one that's going to go to the L line. Now, this is where I told you the other two lines that go to ground. You have a resistor. Well, before I get into that one, we just have the red wire that's going to go to the five volts coming out of the Arduino. Remember, that's not the one going to the LED that's just for the chip power so that's pin number 24 over here this has the red one going directly to the power and then on pin number 23 we have the resistor that's going to go to ground so we have pin number 23 going through a resistor and I join it up with this wire that's coming out of pin number 21 and that just goes to ground so pin number 21 goes to ground. It comes over to join with this one that goes directly to ground. And that's it. So, you know, we got all the wiring done. This one right here that doesn't have anything in it between the resistor, that would be the one that goes the D out. So in, if you were daisy chaining, this one would go to the next DM13A. But like I said, I'm going to talk about that in a future video. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and call it a day for this one. And I think that I pretty much explained everything about as clear as I can make it. Um, you know, once you see this, and I think you, you'll realize that it's not as hard as it seems. I was kind of scared of it myself when I just looked at them because it did look like there was a lot going on when you just look at the diagram, you know, for the wiring. 
but if you just take it one step at a time um, I believe I got it to work the first time you know when I just started playing around with them so don't be scared of it it's not that bad on the following video I'm gonna talk about daisy chaining uh, DM 13 A's so you can use two or three or four of them together to get 64 LEDs if you wanted to and then on a separate video I'm gonna be talking about this little contraption that I made um, it's basically gonna be talking about bar bar graphs how to create bar graphs you know for different things different functions of the simulator so I'll see you on the next one take care